praise God. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. And we thank God for the son that was given. Could we lift our hands today, even as we go to God and pray? Father, we thank you today for this glorious day that you have made. This is the day you have made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. And today we remember that you sent your son, Jesus Christ, to come into this world. For your soul loved this world. My God, that he would die. And oh God, that those who believe in him, we will not perish. So we thank you for sending your son. We thank you for all that you've done for us. We pray your blessing, oh God, even as we go through the course of this service, that we remember what you have done. Oh, this glorious day, this Christmas day, we thank you, even for those that might be viewing online, for those that couldn't make it to church today. Lord, we thank you for each and every one of them. We pray your blessing upon us today. Watch over us. Thank you for your Holy Spirit in this house. And we say glory be to your name today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Could you clap your hands in this house today? The wise men came from far to worship. I don't know where you came from this morning, but I hope you came to worship. Could you join with Anika as she leads us into this morning's worship? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. It's wonderful to be in the house of the Lord this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. Just give the Lord a wave for our friend this morning. Hallelujah. Merry Christmas Revival Time Assembly. And for those who are online, Merry Christmas to you. Hallelujah. Father, we give you praise this morning.
worship now His majesty Bow to the greatness of His throne Lift up your voice To the splendor of His majesty Now blessing and honor
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you so very much, Anika and team. Hallelujah. We magnify your name. Glory be to God. You know, it may seem somewhat paradoxical that on the day that we celebrate his birth, we get ready to celebrate his death. But really and truly, if you look at it, he was born to die. Hallelujah. You may be seated in this house as we invite our senior pastor to lead us into this communion service. Good morning to you. And could I say Merry Christmas to you also? God bless you. In Matthew's Gospel, chapter 26, verse 26, it's a very interesting passage of Scripture. Let me ask, uh, oh, are they here already? And as they were eating, Jesus took bread, blessed it, break it, and gave it to the disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body. He took the cup and he gave thanks and gave it to them. And then Jesus made a very significant statement. He said, drink ye all of it. Drink ye all of it. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. He bore the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors. Isaiah chapter 5. Chapter 53, rather. His life force, his power, completely covered, cleansed, and cancelled sin. And he spoke just now, paradoxically, that the day he was born, born for a purpose, born to die. Our lives have been forfeited because of sin. But his blood completely reversed the effect of sin so that we could experience eternal life. So as we partake of the broken body and the blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, Let's remember this, one thing. Yes, he came in a manger, but he died on the cross. And the same babe that was in the manger was the Christ who died on the cross. Do you have your emblems with you take the bread lift it up to the Lord his body broken just break it between your fingers I'm going to ask our brother James to lead us in prayer in relation to the bread. Praise the Lord. Our Father, we thank you for this wonderful opportunity to come one more time to another feast around the table of the Lord. Hallelujah. We thank you because we are in the land Blessed of the living. The name of the Lord. And we count it all joy to commemorate Hallelujah. and to look back 
at your broken oh body. Oh my God. And Father, we thank you because it was broken for us. And we were redeemed, oh God, because of all that you went through. As we partake this morning, reminding ourselves, may we partake of healing. May we partake of salvation. May we partake of your righteousness. But, oh God, we rejoice in thy presence. And we say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. He took the bread, broke it, he gave thanks. And he said, Take, eat. This is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. Let's eat together in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord. And the receptacle you have containing the wine, lift it up to the Lord as our brother Andy leads us in prayer. Hallelujah. Father, what a privilege. Mm. What a privilege. What a oh, privilege, yes, Lord. Lord God. Hallelujah. Glory the word says by his stripes we were healed. Thank you, O oh God, for the spiritual healing. Thank you, O oh God, for the physical healing. This blood has never lost its power. The blood of bulls and goats could only cover sin. But this blood has removed sin. Hallelujah. We thank you, Jesus. So we thank you today, O oh God. We know, oh God, that this is an emblem representing, O oh God, the blood of Jesus Christ that has never lost his power. Mm. You died on the cross, O oh God, shed your blood to remove our sin for those who believe upon you. And Lord, we thank you, Jesus. Thank you today that we are healed. Yeah, thank you, O oh God, that even as we drink, O oh God, we yeah. receive your healing today in the name of Jesus Christ. Your power, O oh God, bless flowing you, through you, us Lord. in Jesus' name. So we bless this emblem representing your shed blood today. In Jesus' name we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. 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 He took the cup. And he said, this cup is a new covenant in my blood. It's a new covenant. Not the covenant of the law, but the new covenant of grace. As oft as you drink it, do it in remembrance of me. Drink ye all of it and be thankful. Let's drink together. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. And while our brethren are still standing here, I'm going to ask them, Brother James, to bring greetings to the congregation on this Christmas day. May I say to you a very pleasant good morning. And to say on behalf of my wife, my entire family, and to you and your family, a very Merry Christmas, have an enjoyable day, and God bless you. Amen. And Brother Andy? Praise God. You know, growing up as a child, Christmas is different. Christmas, or although you might hear about the Jesus story, you know, Christmas is says for children, toys, and so on. But as you grow up, as you understand, you get reason, you comprehend, you understand Christmas is so much more than just what the world makes it out to be. And so we thank God today that we have this son, Jesus Christ. So on behalf of my family, Anika, and our two children, 
we would like to wish you a very Merry Christmas and remember Christ even in this time. Some say that he wasn't born on the 25th. Some say he was born January 6th. So many different dates, but we know he was born. And so we celebrate the fact that he was born. So God bless you today. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. God bless you, Sister Heart and myself. We'll bring greetings after the service ends. I want to announce Lisa's, Lisa's song. Because it's a little different Christmas sermon on Christmas Day. But I want to share with you, and Lisa's song is going to tell it all. It's a song that we usually hear at, uh, at Easter time. So why should we have a song relating to Easter at Christmas? I'll tell you all about it in our message. Because on the 29th day of October... Early in the morning, the Lord woke me up and He gave me a scripture. And a song. And told me that this is a song that we have to do on Christmas Day. I found this rather strange. How could we sing this kind of song on Christmas Day? And for two months, November, December, I wondered. But when God gives you something, beloved, all you have to do is to be obedient. That's all you have to do. When the Holy Spirit impresses something upon your spirit, there is only one thing you have to do, and that is to be obedient. So I want you to listen to the song that Lisa is going to be singing at this time. Lisa. Hallelujah. Good morning, everyone, and Merry Christmas to you all. Hallelujah. sun where to stand in the morning and who told the ocean you can only come this far and who Yes. 
Would you stand with me, please? He lives. I spoke to him this morning. I don't know if you did. Did you speak to him this morning? And you're able to talk to him tomorrow morning. And you know something, beloved? You're able to talk to him right through the day. Why? Because he's alive. He lives. Glory to God. Job. Job chapter 19. Job is the oldest book in the Bible. Job chapter 19. And we are looking at verse 25. Verse 25. Have you found it? Say amen. That's some of you. Job chapter 19 and verse 25. For I know that my Redeemer liveth and that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. And though after my skin worms destroy this body, yet in my flesh shall I see God. Let's read it again. For I know that my Redeemer liveth, and that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. And though after my skin worms destroy this body, and it will happen to every, every person here who tastes of death, worms will destroy this body. Yet in my flesh shall I see God. So, Father, we ask your blessing upon the word of God as it is ministered this morning in Jesus' name. And let everybody say amen. Take your seats with me. People question the day that he was born. They question the period that he was born. They question the virgin birth, and they question generally his birth. Some even make fun of it. It is accepted that he died. They have a problem with his birth, but they all accept that he died. But in order for him to die, he had to be born. So we celebrate his birth. But today, beloved, in this message, we want to look beyond his birth. We want to look beyond his upbringing. Because he was a boy. And he was brought up in Nazareth. 
We want to look beyond his death on the cross. We want to look beyond his becoming alive, actually showing himself alive to his disciples and many others. They gave testimony to his resurrection. We want to look beyond that. So what do we want to look at this morning? We are looking at his coming again. That's what we want to impress upon this congregation and those who are looking at this, who will look at this telecast today. We are looking at his coming again. We are looking at his returning. At this Christmas time, we celebrate his birth. Let's bear testimony in our own spirits that he lives. And that he lives for a purpose. He lives and he is returning. That's the promise that he made from his word. He lives, he is alive, he is returning. He is our redeemer. Job says, I know that my redeemer lives. He is our redeemer and he's coming back for his redeemed. All the redeemed people, he is coming back for them. We are blessed to be able to say with authority that we know that he's coming back for the church, his redeemed people. He set up his everlasting kingdom to the praise and the glory of God the Father. How blessed are the ones that know their God, the redeemed. You may be wondering, what really is the redeemed? Let's look at the word. The simplest meaning of redeem is to buy back. We were sold as slaves to Satan. Now, that transaction was made by Adam. We had nothing to do with it. After that transaction, every man, every woman, every boy, every girl was shaped in iniquity. It is a nature that we inherited. And because of this, we continue to live and to practice sin because of the nature that we inherited. And like I said before, beloved, we had nothing to do with this. This was a deal that Adam struck with Satan. But hallelujah, Jesus came. Oh, glory to God. If you didn't say amen, you missed a good time to say it. Jesus came. And that made the difference. He was born without sin. Conceived by the Holy Ghost through a virgin. A miraculous event. Whoever heard a virgin girl having a child? Whoever heard somebody being impregnated by the Holy Spirit? Oh, miracle of miracles. Glory to God. He lived a sinless life, but he died for your sin and for my sin. He bought us back from Satan with his own blood because the Bible tells us without the shedding of blood, there is no remission. Are you listening to me this morning, beloved? Hebrews Chapter 9, and from verses 19 to 22, it tells us, without the shedding of blood, 
there is no remission. We have been reminded this morning as we partook of communion that without the shedding of blood, there is no remission. We are reminded, we were reminded because we partook of those emblems representing his broken body and his shed blood, we were reminded that Jesus Christ died for our sins. He shed his blood. That's why the Bible tells us, as oft as he drink this wine, you eat this bread, you do show the Lord's death until he comes. Jesus came into this world as a baby with a young mother, an inexperienced Jewish maiden. But she found favor with God. Even the sex of the child was given. She had not yet conceived. But the angel told her, you shall bring forth a son. I want you to listen to me this morning, beloved. Because this world is going a different way. The angel said, you shall bring forth a son, not a daughter. It was not a daughter who died on the cross for us. You shall bring forth a son, and his name shall be called Jesus. Remember, beloved, the conception had not yet taken place. But the angel said, you are going to bring forth a son. Listen to me. There was no MRI in that day. They could not have seen the sex of the child. But God knew it. And the angel said, you shall bring forth a son. God told them the name of the child. His name shall be called Jesus. The son of God. I believe that there were a lot of boys in Nazareth that day whose name was Jesus. It was a popular name. But there was going to be only one child whose name was Jesus, the Son of God. No other child was going to be called the Son of God. Mary a virgin, promised to a man. His first impulse was to put her away. Oh, because of presumed unfaithfulness. That's the thought that came to his mind. Humanly speaking, that was the first thought that came to him. I'm going to put her away. She was unfaithful to me. She was, she is bearing a child for somebody else. But he listened to God. He listened to God. And I trust, beloved, men, before you make any decision, Listen to God. Hear what God is saying to you. He obeyed the voice of the angel and he took her to be his lawful wife. Both of them, Mary and Joseph, suffering the ridicule and the torments of the neighbors and tongue folks. But they were obedient to God. And that's the important thing, being obedient to God. You may not understand everything that God says to you, but beloved, God is not asking you to understand him. God is saying, trust him. 
That's what he's saying to you, to every one of us. Trust him. Jesus was born. Not in a stately palace, but in a lowly manger. He came into the world to save the sinner, to heal the sick, to lift up the downtrodden, to encourage the distressed, to give hope to the hopeless and security to the helpless. Let's go over the years. In his 30s, he went to the temple as he was accustomed to doing. He took a role. They didn't have books as we know books. Bound books in those days. They had rolls. Scrolls, they called it. So he took a scroll and he opened the scroll to Isaiah. Luke records it. Luke records it in chapter 4 of his gospel. And verse 18, the Spirit, and this is what Jesus read from Isaiah as Luke records it in his gospel. Listen to it. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for the Lord hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, the recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And beloved, all of those people who were in the temple, the religious ones, the leaders, they looked upon him and they wondered, is this the one? Is this the one who is to be our Messiah? Is this the one who is to deliver Israel? Is he the one, this carpenter's son? This son of this poor woman? Is he the one? Would he be the one that God has sent? They wondered. But Jesus closed the roll. He rolled it back up. Gave it to the attendant. Quite manly. Gave it back to the attendant. And then he said something that was not written in the roll. He said, this day. This day. Today. What you have just heard, what I have just said today, this day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. Oh, glory to God. And they all sat in their seats and they wondered. They wondered. But Jesus had already declared to them what you have just heard. Today, this scripture is now fulfilled in your ears. They took him. Eventually, they crucified him. But our Redeemer lives. Oh, he was born. He died. He lives eternally. And there is no more death for Christ. He tasted of the sting of death. But he will never be destroyed by death. Are you understanding me, beloved? Jesus tasted of the sting of death. But he will never be destroyed by death. Death has no dominion over him. Oh, glory. Glory to God. Job looked down through the corridors of time. Job was a prophet. 
and he looked across the ages. Remember that Jesus was not yet even conceived. He was not yet born. But Job, the prophet Job, looking down across the centuries of time, he said, proclaiming with boldness and assurance, even in the midst of his wife who told him to curse God and die. Why did she tell him this? Because Job lost everything. Job lost his flocks. He lost his children. He lost his buildings. He didn't lose his wife. But she is the one who told him, why don't you curse God and die? But Job said, <laughs> oh, glory to God. Job said, I know. Mm, I know that my Redeemer lives. I know that my Redeemer lives. And Job confessed his own bones would be rotted. Worms will eat his flesh. But his spirit will rejoice with his Redeemer. Yeah, Lord. Oh, what a blessed assurance. Could we make such a bold declaration, beloved? And let me tell you this, only those in Christ can declare such words. It does not matter to me if you are a church goer. It does not matter to me whether you were born of Christian parents. What matters most importantly is that you have been born again by the Holy Spirit. That you know Jesus Christ as your Redeemer. I know my Redeemer lives. You listen to the song, I know my Redeemer lives. All of creation testify. This life within me cries, I know my Redeemer lives. When we confess Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, a Savior and Lord of our lives. What are we saying? We are saying in effect, I know my Redeemer lives and he lives within me. That's what we are saying. When we accept Christ as our Savior, this Christmas day, make a decision for him. Accept him as your personal Savior and Lord. Let him save you. Let him forgive your sins, beloved. Let him receive you unto himself. Why? Be ready for his returning. Nobody can do this for you. Be ready for his returning. Because his returning will come. Even as a thief in the night, he will return and he will take unto himself all the redeemed, those who have been born again by the Holy Spirit. He will take those, those who have been washed in his blood, those who have been cleansed, those who have been born again. Why do people make fun of that word, of those words, born again? One man made fun of those words because he couldn't understand it. And he was a leader in the synagogue. He said, how can a man be born again? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? When Jesus told him, you've got to be born again. And we hear a lot of people using that expression born again 
There is only one way to be born again. You need to confess your sin to God and ask him to come into your heart and life. And you become a new creature in Christ after you have repented. After you have turned your back upon sin and accepted Jesus Christ, the son of the living God, as your personal savior and Lord. You're redeemed. Be ready for his returning. Just as surely as Jesus Christ came into this world, just as surely he will come again. Be ready for his returning. Be ready for his returning. Stand with me. For he is coming soon. He is coming soon. With joy, we welcome his return. It may be morn, it may be night or noon. We know, we know that he's coming. He's coming soon. He's coming soon. He's coming soon. He's coming soon. With joy, we welcome his return. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It may be night or noon. You know, maybe you're in this house today. Maybe you're in this house. Maybe you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Maybe you stumble upon this YouTube channel and you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Oh, Jesus Christ came. John 3, 16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes on him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Pastor Hart preached about he's coming again. He's coming again, he's coming again, he's coming again. For those who are looking for him, we look in. Oh dear God, help us Jesus, help us Jesus, help us Jesus, help us Jesus. Help us, Jesus. Help us, Jesus. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you, oh God, for those of us today, some of us, oh God, who may not know you, that will make it right today. Some of us, oh God, who have called upon you before, but somehow we have slipped along the way. Help us to recognize, even through your message, even by your Holy Spirit, that you're coming again. And we must be ready Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord, not to take these words for granted. We thank you, O oh God, for the vessel, O oh God, of Pastor Hart, O oh God, that you must see deliver the message today. Oh, we thank you, Lord. You'll strengthen him. Bless him. But, Lord, we pray as well, O oh God, for those that hear, that we will take heed to the call. Might be his voice, but, Lord, your spirit working through us today. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, convict us. God, we need you, we need you, we need you, we need you. And we need to be ready. We need to be ready. Help us to get our lives in order. Get our house in order. For we know that you're coming again. So we thank you, Lord, today. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name.
In Jesus' name. We bless you today. We bless you today. You may be seated in this house today. We want to call the pastors, our senior pastors, they have been with us. And we honor them. And we want to call Pastor and Sister Hart to bring greetings to us today. Could you clap your hands and welcome our pastors today? Thank you very much, Andy. Praise God. Sister Hart, bring greetings to the congregation. Praise God. Hallelujah. It's a privilege to be here for this Christmas. Amen? A great privilege. But I would like to say to you this morning that we would have no Christmas if we did not have Mary. And if Mary did not humble herself, she would not have brought forth that son, Jesus Christ so that we can celebrate his birthday. And I want to wish you this morning not only a very Merry Christmas, but I pray, most of all, as Mary did, that each one of us will be clothed with humility. The book of Peter says that we should humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God, and he will exalt you in due season. In the book of Micah, God says, one of the things that he requires of us is that we walk humbly with our God. So I pray this morning that you will put on the robe of humility and walk humbly with God, not only today, but every single day that he allows you to be upon this earth. But the Lord bless every one of you, and I pray that you will have a blessed a quiet, a safe Christmas day. Thank you very much. Thank you, Norma. This morning, this morning I asked, I asked her this morning, I said, tell me something. Was it, was it 64 Christmases we spent together? She told me, no, it was 65. Because this day is Christmas Day and we are spending it together. So it's 65 Christmases we have spent together. God helping us. Amen. So I want to wish you a good, a God-blessed day. And thank every one of you for your loving kindness your faithfulness to the house of God. So we bless you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. So we say Merry Christmas to you and your family. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. It's good to be in the house of God. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go down to revival time assembly. Amen, amen, amen. Clap your hands unto God today. Hallelujah. A king is born. Thank you, Jesus. So we would invite you to come and give our song just before Pastor James comes to with the benediction. Amen.
Father, we thank you that we could be in thy presence one more time. And now that we have come to the end of this service, we thank you for blessing us. Thank you for your word. Father, we pray you will take your people home safely and you will bring them back at the appointed time. And now may the Lord bless thee and keep thee. May the Lord make his face to shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance and give thee peace. In Jesus' name, amen. You are dismissed.